In this video, you're going to overcome your fear of text animators by creating a simple type animation. Hi, I'm Adam Bennett, this is The Video Shop. If you're watching this, there's a good chance you're either text animator phobic, agnostic, or maybe you've never even heard of them. If you're wary of them, you're not alone. I recently posted this on LinkedIn, and these were some of the responses from my esteemed and attractive motion design peers. And that's pretty much the same reaction that I get from students typically when I introduce them to text animators. And I can't blame them. They've only just learned how to ease animation timing in the graph editor. Then they're faced with this. Hence this video, because if you don't know text animators, you're missing out. They're amazing if you're up against the deadline, and the more familiar you become with them, the more creative you can be. And crucially, they're non-destructive. Okay, let's get started. What I'm about to show you is how I introduce students to text animators. They have a lot in common with shape layers, the way that you can add modifiers with the button on the top right, having folders with attributes you can turn on and off, and adding wiggles and stuff like that. So although it's not essential, it will certainly help if you're already familiar with shape layer groups. So let's start with the text layer, unsurprisingly. What should we type? Don't be afraid. What I say on every first date. It's kind of creepy, need to stop doing that. So to add a text animator, we need to untwirl down here, and then you should see this animate text with uh, what looks like a play icon in a circle. If for any reason you can't see this, it could be that you've got your layer switches or transform controls hidden, so you can turn them on and off here. So look, it's gone, but as soon as I've got these on, it's there. It's the easiest way visually to see what text animators do. One of the easiest ways anyway, is to add position property. So let's add that. And it's now given us animator one, brain selector one, and this position here. Let's just pause a second. No offense to the After Effects developers, but I think this is one of the things that puts people off text animators. Like what the hell even are these? It's not intuitive. We've also got a stopwatch icon here, which is a little bit misleading slash enticing because that's what we do in After Effects. We, we set keyframes and then we, we do that and then we ease it. That's what we do. We keyframe things, but we don't want to be keyframing this. In pretty much all the time that I've used text animators, I very rarely had to keyframe the properties that I've added to text animators. With maybe with this exception, tracking, for example, you could just add keyframes to the tracking, not even go into the range selector. Boom, you've got trailer titles for a Denny Villeneuve film because you can't set keyframes for kerning. Kerning and tracking, I know the different things, but um, it's not what we're here to talk about. At the moment, we've got position, we haven't set it to anything, so let's move it on the Y and we'll set it to 400. If we go into our range selector, we've got start, end and offset. So these are the things really that we want to be keyframing. So we obviously don't want to be keyframing the position here because we could just be doing that in the master transform controls. You will notice that we've now got these vertical lines at the start and end with these triangles here. And if we move the start and end, you'll see that these lines are moving and that's the range of which part of our text has been affected, hence range selector. So now we know what range selector is. If you want to fix the way that these lines are sort of halfway down, you can go into advanced and we can adjust the smoothness. So if we reduce that all the way to zero, it's just going to be a kind of very linear. The text is either there or it's not. So smoothness gives us a bit of in between. We'll have a look at these in a second, but let's, for now, let's set the end value to 100. We're going to keyframe the start from zero to 100. And let's just do it over a second and then preview. Pretty crappy, pretty linear. Now you might think to fix linear timing, we want to ease ease. That's what we're used to doing, isn't it? Taking these keyframes, F9, going into the graph editor and then pulling the Bezier handles to set some, some nice easing. But the, the way the individual letters are animating up is still linear. There's only easing on the timing as, as you go from the first D to the last D. So that's another thing that's not particularly intuitive. The easing is in advanced 
and its percentages instead of easy ease keyframes and the graph editor. So we've got percentage values, ease high and ease low. Let's set ease high to be 100 because even I can't remember which is which. I think that ease high is the same as ease out, but let's see. Just so we can see what's going on, let's just pull this out so we can just see what it's doing to like the D. So there you go. So you can see it's easing out, but it's snapping in. So if we set the ease low, we should have ease out and ease in. Maybe you can think of a fun mnemonic for that. So now the animation of each letter is buffly smooth, as I could say, but it is still doing one letter at a time. And even if we pull this back to one, with all the letters, it's a bit, it's a bit erratic. It'd be nice if the animation of the letters was overlapping and we can fix that with the shape here. So there's quite a bit of twirling and untwirling with text animators. But once you've adjusted some of the variables, we can use our trusty UU you, you. shortcut. Whatever values we've tweaked, it's now gonna reveal those and we've obviously got U for our keyframes. So let's change it from square to ramp up. But now it starts like this. So it's sort of halfway done. So when you change the shape to ramp up, we have to get rid of the start keyframes and offset minus 100 to 100. Or there you go, minus 100. That looks right. Now that we've got that set up, if we wanted to change it from individual letters to words, we can go based on, and this bit's pretty intuitive, based on characters, words. Years ago, before I started using text animators, this is how I'd create this kind of animation. Set the position timing keyframes on the whole text layer, then mask off the first letter, duplicate, move the mask and repeat. You might want to grab a coffee for this bit. You can use sequence layers to stack the timing, but obviously tweaking the timing would be a faff, not to mention if the client said, great, love it, but can we change it to impact typeface? Impact. You don't see that so much nowadays, do you? Anyway, you'd have to remask all the letters and probably kill yourself before you'd finish. But if we want to change it here, obviously it takes a second. When I'm teaching, I always suggest to students that they make a few examples to familiarize themselves. So what you might do is in a separate comp, and then ease low minus 100. And we'll set this back to characters and just see, so that's kind of snapping into place like it's magnetized. Let's move that up here. There's another one. Move it down. Solo it. And this one, both minus. Let's see what that does. Mm. Okay. It's weird, but I kind of like it. Set the Y value to be 800. So it's worth doing this sort of thing, playing around with different easing values, shapes, and building up a library of experiments to help get your head around text animators. My experiments did not turn out quite like yours. Okay, so let's go back to the one that we're gonna create. I'm gonna leave my ease high and ease low at 100. And so I'm gonna change this back to characters. We might want characters excluding spaces because if we look here, it's subtle. There's more of a gap between the T and the B because it's factoring the, uh, the spaces there. And if we change that, it's just gonna adjust it slightly. The mode we're gonna ignore for this tutorial, although it is worth noting that if you change it from add, which is the default to subtract, it reverses it. So if you wanted an up and down movement, what you could do is duplicate your animator 
and then go into the duplicate, change it to subtract, and then we just need to press U every time in our keyframes. And we've got an up and down move. Okay, I'm just gonna delete that. We are gonna have a duplicate animator, but not to do that. So now we're starting to get ahead around the range selector. Let's add, because at any point we can add properties, um, but we can also add other selectors. So we've also got a wiggly and expression selector. So if we add a wiggly selector, it immediately sort of randomizes these letters and we turn off the range selector. Just gonna carry on wiggling. If you want to explore wiggly selectors more, it's kind of beyond the remit of this tutorial, but you've got sort of wiggles per second. You've got the temporal and spatial phase, which is the same as shape layer groups, the uh, the wiggle part. And that. For a deep dive, I'd recommend Evan Abrams. Does a very good job of explaining it in um, this video here. Jesus, nine years ago. But yeah, exploring wiggle selectors and all their potential is beyond the remit of this tutorial. But just worth noting, not only can you add another range selector, you can also add these other selectors. And the expression selector, I'd say if you're a beginner, ignore it completely for now. Lazy bastard. But at least now we know what selectors are available to us. And obviously we've got all these properties that we can animate. The best way to familiarize yourself is to just add these and play around and see what happens. So for example, you know, if we add a scale property and set it to zero, you can see the letters are scaling up as well. So you can have myriad, well, not myriad, you can have a certain number of um, uh, of properties under one animator affected by a range selector. So you might have noticed that if we say add rotation, we've got these crosses here. And if we set the rotation to be 180, the crosses are for the anchor point. So you can see the anchor point is on the bottom of the letters. So again, that's the default. Now don't be tempted to go and try and fix it by adding an anchor point modifier here because you'll just get yourself into all sorts of problems. What you want to do is go into more options and then you've got, again, and this is another sort of non-intuitive aspect of it, I suppose. You've got grouping alignment and you can see these crosses move and thankfully it doesn't affect the animation and we can just pop them so they're broadly in the center of our letters now. I'm gonna leave those there, but get rid of the rotation property. Just one more thing I wanna show you before we have our text animating on and off is if you wanna make your letters 3D, don't, don't make it an adjustment layer, but don't, don't make it 3D and think that those layers are gonna be 3D because you can see it's not giving us any Z position property to animate here. What you want to do is go to the top of property and enable per character 3D and you'll see a slightly different icon. So this icon here is like two cubes as opposed to this one here. And now you can see it's given us material options, geometry options, you can change renderer and you can extrude it now. Again, beyond the remit of this tutorial, but we can rename these animators and be massively anal. That's what I tend to do. So let's call this one animate in. And it just helps visually if you're jumping on someone else's project or your own project, being able to see what these animators are doing. So if we have this as animate in, and then we're gonna duplicate it, call this one, yeah, wait for it, animate out. I'm gonna just turn off animate out for now and animate in. Let's have the letters kind of zooming in from behind the camera. So, kind of like that. I think we're gonna to have to compensate the Y a little bit. So, so 33, uh, let's just set this to minus 3000. That'll definitely be behind the camera, even though we don't have a camera. Okay, so let's preview that and see what that does. Mm, okay, so I'm getting just like one, it's almost like a flash frame of white, so. Maybe we don't need ease high to be as great. So we can just pull this in a bit. So that might get rid of the flash frame. So that's 50, see what that does. Yeah, so that's a bit better. Okay, so we've got our letters animating in. Now we can just turn that off. 
So that's a good thing about text animators. Just turn them on and off to focus on the one that you want. So that one's gonna do its thing. And then this one, we want it to animate off. At the moment, the offset is the wrong way around. So we actually want it to be animating to where we set this position. So, and I want the letters to go off to the right. So I'm gonna push this all the way over there. Maybe 1600. We want to swap these over, so I'm going to right click, select both, keyframe assistant, time reverse. There we go. So they're flying off to the right, let's protect the timing of that. Yep. Now we just want to shift these keyframes along, but we kind of want a little bit of overlap, so let's just see what that looks like. I'm just going to press U to focus on the keyframes. So there's a little bit of overlap. And I've got like sort of four frames of overlap. Just watching it now, maybe you need just a beat or half a beat to just read that afraid as it comes in. This is where you might, if you want to, like ease ease, because look, as it comes in, they're not resting in place for even a millisecond before it animates off. But if I, if I select these, if I F9 them now, Just that micro adjustment of timing, and you can maybe even shift them along one or two frames. So, even though the animation timing overall is shortened, you've just got that microsecond to read the text before it animates off. And, like I say, with text animators, one of the great things is sort of all of this animation, four keyframes, so two sets of keyframes that you're adjusting. So that's it for this tutorial. It's no coincidence that what we've just created is one sting from this compilation I showed you at the beginning. Next week, we'll look in more detail how to create show package broadcast motion graphics. It's quite a clunky phrase. I'm not even sure that's the right term. Having a handle on text animators will definitely help when we look at this in more detail because it's mostly done with text animators. If you don't want to miss that, you know what to do. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.